do it with TV. Are we live? Oh, it's taking sweet old time. We are two, three. I'm still waiting. <laughs> Why is it taking so long? We are playing the waiting game for a long time now. I wonder if there's so many people on right now. Hmm. This hasn't happened before. No, it has not. I'm just wondering, maybe. Oh, seriously? It didn't work. Serial. Serial. It did not work. So let's find out something. Let me see if I can close a few more things here. Should I close my Facebook maybe too? Oh, well, it's coming from your end. No, it's probably coming from my end. Now, why is it not going? Do, 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 do. Oh, we are live. It says we're live now. Ah. It took forever and a day to go live, but we are live in Total Health. Live. Total health. We have a Total Health broadcast. The broadcast is healthy as well now. The broadcast has begun. Now, the challenge is, for those of you who are looking at this within the new normal diet, we're just giving this to you at a later time. Okay. So same thing is true of Total Health Live. We could not run it through Total Health Live and get more people because of privacy settings. So that notwithstanding. What he just said. <laughs> what he just said. Bad habits. Bad habits. These are. Get rid of them. Get rid of them. I had a hard time finding a Breaking Bad meme, but I wanted to do that just because Walter White's still one of my favorite. I, I have yet there. to see it. I did see two episodes, and I thought, "Wow, it started off a little more violent than I wanted to." But I now, know by at episode, some point, for some people, it's episode five or six. I think that hooks them. So. Yeah, I mean, I'm willing to go in again because I do appreciate good drama and good um, good production, good television and, and film. So I do appreciate it. Because you are a broadcast journalist, broadcast <laughs> person. <laughs> well, I'm also, you know, I also like brought up production and, uh, you know, the visuals. And I, I was just sharing, I'm in a course this weekend. And uh, we were just talking about, because I'm a caregiver and because I haven't been able to travel as much as I'd like to, I, yeah. you know, I started this whole Netflix kind of traveling through Netflix where I watched a lot of foreign film and television and it was just fabulous. I felt like I was there. That was how I could do it. And it was, it was a great escape, a great virtual escape. So- you were traveling um, through Netflix? Pardon me? You were traveling through Netflix? I was traveling through and with Netflix. Foreign films, foreign television foreign. shows. Foreigners. They weren't yeah. they weren't Americans. No. Well, yeah. I did watch some of those too, but that's uh, it's a little more challenging watching foreign films because uh, because of the subtitles, but I don't mind it. I never have minded it. Uh, but it, it just is wonderful to kind of look at these other cultures, many other cultures. And uh, so that is fantastic. And speaking of cultures, many of them don't have the same bad habits that we do. This is true. And you know what I posted? You know what, Christopher? I what? posted something on uh, Facebook yesterday and I said, I asked um, my people, uh, my friends, you know, what bad, what habit have you let go of in the last 60 days? And what new habit have you created? One of our mutual friends said he let go of yoga. That was not a good habit to break. Yoga, but I I responded with, you know, there's a lot of yoga videos online. There's a lot of things. And, you know, then someone else responded, you know, I can't go to the gym. I can't go lift weights. So I've taken up yoga. So everyone, but, you know, I want to tell you this. This is something I've been preaching for years and years and years. You know, most people who responded have made healthier choices. Most True. people are exercising more. They've slowed down more. They, um, they're they more rested. They have time to cook. They have time to prepare. I saw, you know, I saw meal planning was something that was uh, people were doing. Um, you know, so this is something, this is the problem with our health and, uh, you know, losing weight or, or maintaining a good weight. It's like, there's just too much going on all the time. And I'm, you know, you need to take things off your plate. And I think this great, this great pause we've been in 
has given people an opportunity to do that. So take things off your plate because you don't necessarily want to finish your plate. You don't want to have that many things on your plate, right? That's, that's going to get us into the habits that we're talking about. Yes, it will. It will. Go so, ahead. So your top 10, your most popular bad habits, one of them was missing meals. Yeah. Yeah, missing meals. What do you think about that? You do that, right? I am so guilty of missing meals. You do that, yeah. I, I, it's like when I get involved in a project, whether it's writing something or scheduling broadcasts or doing whatever it is, I often forget to eat. Usually it's forgetting to eat lunch. Mm -hmm. But it's like, why am I hungry? It's 3.30 in the afternoon. Oh, because I didn't have lunch. Yeah, so your blood sugar drops. and I mean, it's really hard on your system when your blood sugar is dropping. Well, so A lot of it depends on what I've been consuming previously because for I can have just a tiny amount for breakfast. I could just have, for example, a can of sardines, back to my favorite, at lunch. Sardines. I'm good to go till like five o'clock or so when I feel like I need a little snack. You know, so a new habit I've I, started is... The type of food makes a big difference in terms of so-called missing meals. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Um, so uh, one of the new habits I've created is formal Fridays, put my earrings on. You got your earrings on? I got, I got your shirt fish, as well. Fish Fridays. Cause, cause we used to like to fry fish. Yeah, not there you go. Know, that's very Catholic. That's very Catholic. I, I, my mother was Roman Catholic. My father was not. Yeah. So, so. <laughs> um, so the second one is snacking, which snacking. is my, my uh, issue. You, you want an issue of snacking or a solo I, subscription? Is there a book snack, called snacking? Snack of, snack of the month club? <laughs> is there a book or a magazine called like, snacking monthly? Snacking. <laughs> Actually, we could create one. Snacking weekly. Yeah, we could because. We could do well, W-E-A-K-L-Y. But you know, the snacking doesn't have to be food. It could be snacking no. with thoughts, that snacking with you know, communication. Most, most people, most people think snacks are. We're going to change the vernacular, though. Here, we're we're going to be transformational, and we're going to. Snacking. But again, that's one of the biggies. That's like a you know a ha habit, an unconscious habit, often. Uh, you know. Well, and it's and it's also when you think about snacking, a lot of it has to do with stress eating, and. Very few people, we've been dealing with this here in particular with a child who's going to become a quarantine teenager this coming June. Did, one, did you just make that up? Or? I made it up a couple okay. days ago. I said he's going to okay. turn into a quarantine teenager. <laughs> Quarantino. He's going to well, be he's a. 12. He's yeah, not, not Quentin Quarantino. Quentin that would be that, that would be a director who can't get out and make movies. But we'll have to do home videos, right? His home videos. <laughs> but one of the but one of those things is getting him and getting us too at times to pour a snack food into a bowl for portion control, as opposed to digging into an entire bag of pretzels, you know, and having no idea what the quantity was that you had consumed. Yeah. Yeah, very unconscious habit, very yeah. unconscious, and uh, and we do it all day long. It's it's just something, and I think that's great. Portion control. I've been a portion big proponent control. of portion control for a, a long time, and even with popcorn, you know. Um, oh yeah. Well, I mean, for me, it's ice cream. So I used to be I used to be able to go through a half a gallon probably in like two days or so. Wow. But if I put a little bit into a bowl. Oh, I, you know, my, my ice cream thing, my ice cream habit started at the age of four months. So <laughs> that's a whole, that that's just early imprinting. You know, it's like so there, the, was, there was no mother's milk. It was mother's ice cream. Oh, we started out with mother's milk, but, but I apparently. Spoke. You mean your mother was very cold. <laughs> she was. One is sweet as I did help for. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so. <laughs> God rest her soul. Oh, dear. <laughs> anyway, but that's a whole other story about German <laughs> mothers. And we can get into that some other time. But that is, she was definitely an influence on certain habits. So was my dad, for that matter. I mean, you know, habits for her must have come from Catholic school because all the nuns wore habits. But that's a different type of habit. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so, so, but yeah, so for, at four months, well, I'd been basically cut off the, the dairy bar from my mom earlier than that because I had a nasty habit of biting. So, oh. Yeah. Later. So I spoiled it. I spoiled it for the other four and kids. And you were the first. You were the first child, I right? was the first. So I spoiled that whole habit 
for for the other four kids coming along. They all wound up with formula and cow's milk and things like that. But that that being said, and the personal family history of yours truly being revealed, um, ice cream came into my life at the age of four and a half months at a Fourth of July picnic. Um, when one of my grandfather's congregation members decided it would be cute to give a little four month old an ice cream cone. And not only did I consume that ice cream, but I also gummed the cone since I was lacking teeth. So, so I blame whoever, whoever you are, you're probably long since passed. I blame you for my ice cream habit. <laughs> wow. That is quite a habit. Which, kick, which, takes us, which takes us from snacking really to getting hooked on sugar. Oh, getting hooked okay. on sugar. I was never hooked on phonics, but clearly I was hooked on sugar. Clearly the sugar and the fat and the, the dairy and the meat. It was all yeah. so good. And there is a genetic factor to being uh, a, having a sweet tooth. And yeah. uh, you know, I, I was just talking with my sister the other day about that. Um, you know, I have a sweet tooth. My father has a sweet tooth. My mother does not have a sweet tooth. She would rather have savory and, you know, salty and sour yeah, my, things. Whereas my mom had the sweet tooth and she couldn't wait for bread and pastries and anything. My father did not. And now I'm realizing I'm taking after my mother more than my father. And it's like, Ugh. Yeah, yeah. Good, both good and bad. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm just looking at my, because there's 10 of us and I'm just looking. Uh, most of us have sweet, sweet, huh? 10, 10. How many were sweet tooths? How many were savory? Well, I'd say most of them were sweet tooth. Uh, yeah. But again, what do we, uh, uh, it's just uh, genetics are only half the picture. It could have been more environmental. I mean, well, this, is, this, is what I, what, this is what I'm wondering. Had I not been yeah. exposed to ice cream at the age of four months, would I have manifested the sweet tooth as much? Yeah, yeah. So these are, that's a habit, you know, the sweet yeah. tooth habit can be not just genetic, but definitely it's there. I mean, it's, the, it's just like, Always have dessert after your meal. Always have dessert. I mean, my my okay. husband gets meals on wheels, and he's getting desserts, but his desserts are very minimal, and like they, there's hardly jello. Any sugar. There's always room for Jello. Jello. He well, he, he keeps getting Jello, and he can't he can't maneuver the Jello, so she oh. he hates eating it. So it goes all bounce, you know, all over the place. So I give it, it to shakes, it bounces. Yeah, it's hard to eat. It's true. It, Jello is just terribly uncooperative, especially in Southern California, where we occasionally have earthquakes, and it just it makes it even vibrate. Yeah, it bounces bent all over the place. Yeah. At least it doesn't break. Well, it's it does true. break. It does not break. It does break, but it's normal, not normal, normal chewing Jello break a tooth, which is really good. So, really? but you know, we did the whole thing on sugar last time. Getting hooked on sugar is one of those yeah. habits, and then eating too late at night. Yeah, I see this all the time. I mean, what's too late? It definitely two hours, three hours, I'd say four or five hours before going to bed is too late. I mean, there are some people that like to have a snack, yeah. but. I was just gonna say eating a pint of Ben and Jerry's too late at night combines two bad habits. Well, combines three. Well, well three actually, yeah, that's true. Snacking, sugar, and eating late. There you go. Check, check, check. It's the trifecta. <laughs> It is. Um, it's yeah, just not a good else. thing. It's just unless you, you know, unless you want to have something like light, something light, like a piece of fruit or, you know, like a couple of tablespoons of, uh, of um, uh, yogurt or almond butter or something like that, because maybe a, you feel a, little... a single whole wheat cracker. Yeah, something like that, you know. Um, <laughs> but generally, you don't want to eat heavy. You just definitely don't want to eat too close to bedtime because that will be yeah. disruptive to your sleep. Yeah. Okay. Let's see, what other habits do we have? Oh, not, not hydration. Hydration, hydration, hydration. Not drinking yeah. enough water. Hydration. Cheers. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of people think they're hungry and they're really thirsty. And so, you know. I saw that a lot in practice. In fact, you know. Well, all the people coming in with tension headaches when, you know, the muscles yeah. at the back of their head, the suboccipital muscles really tight, they had tension headaches. And the only thing that they really needed to do was to drink some more water and the tension headaches would disappear. Or like you're talking about, you know, hunger, or I should say thirst, which is masking and masquerading as hunger. So Yeah. 
Um, you know, my, my husband is on a uh, fluid restriction because he's a, a dialysis patient. Yeah. Uh, but he, uh, the other night, it was really hot here last week, 95 and up. Really? Uh, You're much cooler. Yeah, it's usually cooler by the ocean. And we talk about that. I mean, when I lived in Malibu, it was uh, sort of, I felt, wow. But it was always cold and damp there. So I'm, I don't mind. Well, I shouldn't say I do mind when it's, you know, one day it's winter and the next day it's summer. It's a little bit difficult. But anyway, he was he was going to bed and he drinks this sort of insure, but it's specifically for renal patients. And it's thick and creamy and that's what he drinks. But he just just had to have a lot of it. He was he was like not feeling well. And then he started drinking it, felt a lot better. Um, you know, he had maybe a half a cup, like, you know, like maybe maybe two ounces, three ounces, yeah. which is unusual for him to want that, you know, at, at, in the evening, but yeah. So but that's biochemical individuality. And it's also the exactly. changing environment, both external and internal. And every day is different. Sometimes just barometric pressure can change your, your thirst and your eating habits. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So um, just pay attention. Um, also, also, if you're not taking or you're forgetting to take your supplements, like the other day, I almost forgot to take my vitamin D3. And I was like, oh, no. You know, I have my supplements right in front of me at my computer, at my other computer here, right in front of me. And sometimes it's just I've got all this other stuff going. So I'd say maybe once a week I, f I forget or I postpone or delay it. Uh, but I do what I've met. I what I've suggested to people is to put it in a place that you're always going to. If you're washing your hands at the sink, put it right there. If yep. you're at bedtime, you know, like your magnesium and your calcium and your bone up and whatever you need for, uh, you know, to to help you sleep, put it right there on your dresser by your bed. Yeah, I think I, like one of the things we do is like I actually have placed digestive enzymes in the bathroom and in the kitchen. So just in case you forget to take it in the kitchen, I'll have it up at yeah. the, in the bedroom. Yeah, you have to deposit them all over the place. Yeah, they're just little, little. Uh, it's almost like little gnomes, little yeah. vitamin gnomes everywhere. I always the use these. Yeah, those are good. I yeah, love those those. are good. I use them for my husband's medication, and these yeah. are all my supplements here. They're great, and they're really they're great. great. They're inexpensive. They're great for inexpensive. supplements. Yeah. Yeah. Particularly and they have smaller ones too. What's that? Sorry. There are smaller things too. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, that one's particularly good if you're if you're on a, a re regimen. Let's say you're doing a detox yeah. program or something, and you really need. You've got a lot of supplements to take. Yeah, yeah. And then you can buy these little baggies too. You can put them in in your purse or your pocket when you're going out. When you're going out, um, that's a very odd thing to say, isn't it? When you're going out. When you're going. When you're going up. Or out? Out, you know, out to, but out? You mean out in a boot? Out in a boat. Okay. But anyway, I, I did want to mention something else that yeah. someone was doing a lot of in the last uh, 60 days knitting yeah. like, like crazy. <laughs> knitting like crazy? I mean, that's a great way to stop yourself from munching and, and you know, it overeating. Keeps, it you keeps know? your hands busy because you exactly. need Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that was um, interesting, very positive things. Maybe the people who are like not, um, you know, creating new healthy habits um, didn't want to admit it. I'm not sure. Well, but also the healthy habits, I mean, you need to have, you, you know, we've often heard about creating the powerful why. Like, why do you want to do something different? Are you really sick and tired of being sick and tired? Are you, are you concerned about coming out of quarantine with the, the, quarantine 15 or the COVID 25. I mean, is there, is there something, you know, are there things you want to do and are you looking forward to a better life and being strong and healthy when you go out into the world? And if so, are you willing to establish some new good habits and let at least let go of the bad ones as opposed to trying to kill off the bad ones? Yeah, and I didn't specifically ask if there were healthy habits, but that's what we're talking about today. We're specifically talking about mainly dietary, would you say? Yeah, or your general health habits. Yeah. Not primarily dietary, but there are things like the next one that we have on our on our uh, list or lineup, which is not getting enough sleep and going to bed way too late. Yeah, and again, that could be because you're eating late, 
you're overstimulating your brain towards, you know, around bedtime. You're binging on Netflix and Amazon Prime and Hulu late at night. You know, it's it's if you're more engaged, uh, like if you're on your computer and your brain is more engaged and there's this two way going, that is much more stimulating than just watching a movie or, or TV. Now, if you right. over if you overdo that, if you're like watching a, an hour or two, but then you start binging and you're watching five and six, that can be stimulating. Yeah. Um, so, yeah the Ayurveda talks about that. You know, you can do a little bit, but after a while, it's 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 deranging your vata which is sort of your mental um how how you uh, it's your mental capacity really i guess that's the vata. right word so yeah you don't want to you, you, you got a vata and i pit it vata. and also having heated conversations at the end of the uh, at the end of the day you know you save that for the next day save it let's we'll talk about that tomorrow let's table that for tonight yes um Oh yeah, the people who mentioned, you know, somebody is mentioning no time for exercise. You know, yeah, time. well now we do. <laughs> you got time. Lots of time. Lots you of don't time. need you don't need a gym to exercise. This was one of the funniest things that I'd seen someplace. Someplace they were doing protests about the stay-at-home order. And there were a bunch of people, they were all doing push-ups and sit-ups and everything on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. uh, but it proved the point that they actually could exercise without the gym. Yeah, well, of course. So, but that was, but it was the funniest thing because I don't think they really realized what they were doing. <laughs> yeah, they were sort of unconsciously doing that. Well, who had yeah. gyms hundred years ago, and they, people were much fitter and healthier. Well, they were yeah. more fit, let's say. You know, gyms are a, a new phenomenon, and I'm sorry to say that that some of the gyms are actually going. I think um, 24 Hour Fitness or some big one is going into Chapter 11 or something. So, yeah, well, it's very funny. sad. You just reorganize and yeah. reopen later under a different plan. It doesn't mean that they're right. gone forever. It just yeah. means that there's way too much debt to keep the doors open for the yeah. For the, I did, the gym I did see someone that had a smaller gym, and she was saying about. I mean, I, a lot of people are being affected. Their businesses are being affected, yeah. no doubt. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people are pivoting and, and starting to offer online exercise classes. And, and in terms of and, yeah, because I mean, my sister actually had. Uh, online line dancing through right. zoom that was kind of yeah. interesting yeah and so along those lines though re reducing stress with meditation finding the time to be reflective or to do yoga which can be meditative as well as a physical exercise fitting that time in was one of the things people say i just don't have the time and then the one with the opposite which is saying yes to too many things and not having sufficient boundaries yeah yeah right? i Trying find to be all things people I find this more with women, you know, yeah. uh, yes, yes, yes. And, and um, you know, sometimes it's associated with self-esteem and, you know, wanting to be liked and, yeah. and that kind of thing and hard to say no, but you have to, you have to, as, as I mentioned before, taking things off your plate, yep. literally and figuratively, you have to do that. Yeah. So so I'm, too, I'm sorry. I was just going to say, as we move into this new time, this new normal time, it's going to be hopefully a time to reevaluate what is uh, should be on your plate and yeah. what shouldn't. Yeah. And if any of you have any comments or questions, or even want to come in here, that would be interesting. I could put come on in. Come into our Zoom. Come on in. I'll, I'll put the link down. I'll put the link down under the video right now if you want to come in and ask a question, or you can just uh, right. make a comment That's down right. below. So now the question is, now that we know how bad all these habits are, the question is, how do we take steps to break those bad habits? Not breaking bad, but breaking bad habits. Breaking bad habits. Not how do we, Well, we acknowledge that we have that habit. You know, once, you know, you bring Ooh, that habit really? to consciousness. I mean, just like your, your son, you were saying, he yeah. like to eat mindlessly, not knowing. Uh, but if you have a snack habit and a snack addiction, uh, recognizing that is, is well, I think I think it's it's funny. He and I are not genetically related, but we have very similar habits. So. It's behavioral. It's behavioral. It is sure. behavioral. But yeah. but but I think those these behaviors were in uh, in effect long before I entered the picture. But I think it's the norm, though. I think it's a lot of people do that. It's common. I, I don't. Common. I guess it's, it's the old normal. So. 
the old normal and apparently it's a transitional normal because you're still yeah. doing it. <laughs> well, not as much. I mean, it's interesting. I'll go through streaks where, for example, I will have zero alcohol for an entire week or two weeks or something like that, mm -hmm. or, or I'll have no ice cream for almost a month. Wow. That's yeah. something for you. So, so oh boy, you're not kidding me. It's like, you know, it's like, it's like, if a, you know, an addict, you know, just shoot me up with a little bit of uh, New York double. Wow, I had no stuff. idea ice cream is, was, you were so hooked to that. Oh yeah. So, I mean, so I I ice cream. I can go I cold turkey. It could be an IVIC. Yeah. Yeah. And so if, you know, so some people, I mean, what's that? Intravenous ice cream. IV yeah, IV IVIC. Exactly. That's going to be my new oh, hashtag. Oh, IVIC. My huh? oh man. Um, yeah. So, so just recognizing it is a really good start starting point. Oh yeah. So we have uh, Kashandra. Hi. Chandra, hi. Hi. We don't get our comments in here. I'm on the Facebook page trying to put the link in here just so that those of you want to come in. You know, for the little stream art thing, I just put it in there. We have so private if you want to come chat. in and say hello, you can you can click that little link in there, allow your camera and microphone to be used, and pop on in and say hi as we talk about habits. And we're not talking we're not talking about the habits that uh, your local nunnery might have. No, no, those are different types of hab habits. habits. They, do, they do have good habits. They're some, very disciplined. Yeah, some have very good habits. Um, very disciplined. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So we so acknowledge that you have one in the first place. Yeah. Key number one, for sure. Forgive me, Monica, for I have sinned. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. We're human. We all have Don't sinned, me. and we all continue. But, but I th and I think that's the key. The key is bringing it up from the unconscious habit into something that you're conscious of. It's just like establishing new habits. You want to go from conscious incompetence. Yeah. No, sorry, you go from unconscious incompetence to eventually conscious competence. And there's yeah. four steps along the way. Exactly. I wrote about that in my book, actually. Oh. Yeah, the three, the th four levels. Uh, yeah, so you, once you bring it into your consciousness, you recognize it, then you have an opportunity to change it. And this is not, this is a work in progress, always a work in progress. It's not about reaching perfection uh, for the rest of your life. No, it's not. So numero dos, or zwei. <laughs> Trois. Deux. Trois. Trois. <laughs> Forgetting my French. I deem dva, dva for the Russians. Uh, deciding to take action once you've admitted that you've got a habit of omission or inclusion. And you gave the example of plunking yourself in front of your computer for hours and realizing you haven't eaten dinner. Boy, this sounds familiar. Sounds familiar. <laughs> you just lunch. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's that's you. Um, so yeah. I mean, these are things that you. Um, need to you know hopefully we'll recognize and, well, but and also, have, have you have you, well, you mentioned setting timers and setting timers is good it's like the old the pomodoro yeah. method where you work for 25 minutes and take off five minutes yeah so even to get up and, and move around which is by the way i gotta do that right now i gotta get up move around a little bit there you go uh, here's so an better. exercise video we didn't know we were going to do an exercise video for you but we're doing it now it's just a brief stretch i feel a whole lot better actually See, just a little, I've been just standing a, a lot minute. at my computer lately. I've been standing a lot and doing yeah, stretches. Too. So that's been helpful. But setting a cell, yeah, timers are good. Timers are good. Um, setting up somebody as an accountability buddy. Accountability. Accountability. Oh my goodness, that is so effective. I, I remember doing um, an accountability. Well, I have a lot of that with my clients, but I was right. doing it for something that I wanted to be working on. Right. And all we did was on a daily basis, we just texted each other with the word done. Just that was that so is. effective. It was amazing. It just kept us going and, and continuing with this habit we wanted to try and alter. As opposed to sending the text. <laughs> Yeah. And and I think it's some I mean computer
body system, but it's it's good to have that personal touch, that human touch. Well, it'll, it'll, you know, and the thing about it too is it just takes constant, never-ending repetition. You need at least 21 days to establish a good habit. And what's interesting, one of the books I remember is Atomic Habits, excellent book, mm -hmm. just describing mm -hmm. all the different kind of motivations that you can use in terms of, for example, you know, people will escape pain more often than seek pleasure. And so if you set the game up so that it's painful for you not to do something, that it can be a little bit more motivating for some people. So it would be like having a mousetrap yeah, exactly. on the, uh, ice cream, like just right? In the freezer? <laughs> no, you don't. The pain, the, the, the mouse and the cheese or the Christopher yeah, and the exactly. Ben and Jerry's. So yes. That would be so, me. So yeah, that, um, you know, I mean, I, I, I know that pain works better to, in some ways, to, to make a change in a, in a bad habit. And, and when we say bad habit, we're, we're not talking about bad, good and bad, black and white like that. We're talking about something you want to change, you know, something that you want to create a more healthy habit around. So, it's even as simple as walking, for example. If I walk every single day in a row, it's okay, and I've made it a habit. But then like day 23, I decide, oh, I'm too tired. I don't want to walk today. As long as you get back into the habit, the following, the day after when you've messed up, it's a lot easier to continue the habit than it is to let it go two days, three days, yeah. and then you yeah. got to start all over again. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know, you beat yourself up. Oh, I went off the wagon. I can't do this anymore. I'm just, you know, it's, it's like, and then you, you start this failure kind of mantra in your brain and it's it doesn't have to be so that's why an accountability partner helps whether it's a professional or a friend a health coach or health. a health coach coaching for health it's just yeah. says coaching there today so monica coaching and i i for health. putting putting the coaching for health but all of a sudden the key went right to the screen so i'll have to fill it in next the beauty time. the beauty of technology and all the things that can go wrong <laughs> do go wrong they do go wrong yeah so yeah but don't give up that's the whole thing you know it's going to have to you're not going to feel comfortable initially and no. those, those slip ups will happen uh and instead of beating yourself up just remember why you're making the change and just get back on it you know they used to say get back on that horse yeah you, back may, have fallen, you may have fallen on the off the wagon but you can hop on the horse there you go. And you're going to, you're going to be going forward in either way. So and it's the, it's the old thing. I remember in dancing, you know, you go three steps forward, two steps back. You remember the falling back two steps, but you made a net gain of one. Well, I'd like to know about what kind of dancing uh, you're referring to. Did you take dance classes, Christopher? I did. What kind of dance? I, it was, it was of all things. It was country um, Western. No, country Western dancing. Oh my goodness. I had eight I... pair, eight pair of cowboy boots. Wow. I had shirts. One of these days, I might wear my, one of my Brooks and Dunn I, shirts. You know, I've, I've, worn, one, I've got one Brooks and Dunn shirt that is still there. It's got flames leaping up towards my head. So You know, I have known you for like 24 four years, I think, and I, I did not know that about you. See? Did Fun not fact. know that about you. Fun but fact. Revealed you, almost a quarter century later. <laughs> did you know I danced? Yes. You, you knew I that, started with my made, made that clear that you were a dancer. <laughs> I, I have made it clear. Yes, in terms of performance. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, that's okay. So, yeah, so I started off with Bob Fosse kind of jazz dancing, and then I went into yes. ballet. Well, I went into modern, then jazz hands, and jazz then hands. I went to ballet, and I started doing point work. And um, and so I loved, I loved dance, just loved it. And then I, I started, and then I went into hip hop. I thought, you know, ballet dancer, you know, there's a sense of, it's a very different kinds of dance form. So I was like, but I loved it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> there was this little bit of snobbery with ballet, but, um, but I loved it. It was so expressive, so fun yeah. and so rhythmical, you know, anyway, anyway, that's, that's great exercise. For those of you who hate to exercise, dance is probably the most fun exercise you're ever going to get. It's probably why the, there's popularity with Zumba and all these other things, because you've got dance and music and rhythm involved. So It's not exercise. It's beyond exercise. Well, it's beyond exercise. It's self-expression. It's all kinds totally, of different. Totally, totally. But you can, yeah. definitely, you can definitely work up a sweat and get some good cardiovascular 
uh, workouts. I can tell you that. So I saw a video of uh, someone doing a uh, ballet work at, at the bar, at a bar, like at the ballet bar. And then I, then it would go to another shot of someone doing that at home, you know, now in the time of doing home, home video, home exercising. And, you know, this ballet arena would lift up her leg all the way up here at the person who was, she was wearing a similar kind of outfit and she was like, <laughs> she was just, couldn't do it all, but she was trying. She kept trying. It was. I hilarious. thought I thought you were saying that they were. They, I was picturing a bunch of ballerinas at the bar, and they were doing bar work, like they were <laughs> tender bar bar. filling glasses. <laughs> interesting that we've never ever heard. Well, I guess it just doesn't match ballet bar and like a bar ballet bar. A ballet bar. Yeah. It's a tutu, a tutu teeny. <laughs> Next to the quarantine. Oh, this so, is uh, fun Friday for sure. It's fun it's fun Friday. Friday. And also be open to suggestions when you're when you're starting a new habit. There's not one way, I was gonna say one way to skin a cat, but that's a kind of a bad PETA non-PC thing to say. <laughs> but there's more than one way to do something. Um, and you don't have to be stuck with a particular way. You can change things up. But people do that all the time when they were in the gym. And days gone by, people would do like shoulder and back at one time, they do legs another time and things like that. They would be changing it up and you can change it up too. You can have ballet Monday and hip hop Tuesday if you want to, like Monica. <laughs> and what would Wednesday be? Uh, with country and Western. Western, West Coast Swing, West Coast Western Swing. swing. Yeah. You betcha. <laughs> Tango Thursday, I guess. But try to make it game and gamification is very interesting because I used to do a lot of gamification studying and application with people, you know, giving giving yourself points and rewards and and giving yourself a reward so that you establish a reward schedule is pretty good. I once well, I used to have dinner with BF Skinner when I was an undergrad. Yeah, that's <laughs> and he's sort of the fodder. He's the father of of really of uh operant condition behaviors. Yeah. Also the guy with the biggest forehead I've ever seen in my entire life. But mm -hmm. that'd be that I would I would stand in the elevator with him and I would just kind of look over and it's like, God, that really is big. And <laughs> these are the things that you remember. Not the yeah. profound yeah. things that people tell you, but but the things that you hear at dinner and watching people. But anyway. But his whole thing was was a re establishing a reward system for yourself. Mm -hmm. And so maybe it wasn't going into the freezer at the end of your diet to get that one spoon of ice cream. It may be something <laughs> salivating different. Salivating dog. I'm, right? just, I'm salivating now just thinking of ice cream. But the ice cream. Yeah, just thinking about the ice cream. Or seize candy if I could get some. Seize. Well, uh, you, can, you can order it online. I, I yeah. just found out. How somewhere. would you know that? <laughs> So um, B.F. Skinner was the the um, was he a, a, was he a physician? He was a physician, right? A psychologist. Psychologist. So he did the salivating dog experiment. Well, that was long before. That was that was uh, Pavlov's dog. But, Pavlov. but Skinner Skinner yeah. actually used pigeons. Pavlovian. Yes, Pavlovian. Yeah. Skinner had birds. He had birds, and so the pigeons would tap the bars to get the reward when they did right. certain behaviors. Right. Yeah. So it was more of a deprivation, but interesting. No, it was reward. If you did this, you would get this. So it wasn't. He wasn't depriving them. He was actually rewarding them for good behavior. Like you ring the bell. Right. And right. Warm, and ringing the bell. He right. is presented to you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't want to confuse Pavlov's dog ringing the bell and everything. But by the way, that whole Pavlov thing. There's a lot of problems with it because it turns out that the expectation of the researcher was the significant thing because they were looking for the dog to salivate. And it was yeah. the visual clue, cues that got the dog, not the sound of the bell. It's very interesting. I mean, there's so many things that can affect an experiment. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> And yeah. we're always experimenting on ourselves. And, and on Total Health Live, too. Total Health Live. Where you where you may or may not get the broadcast beginning when you think it begins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so keep those healthy habits. Uh, yeah, you had some great things here too. I mean, in terms of thinking, you know, uh, buy some new throw pillows. That could be a reward. You know, if you want to drink more water, get a colorful water bottle. If you can't stand the taste of water, put a couple lemon slices in there, you know, whatever it takes to get hydration going. There are many, many different ways, and I'm sure we'll have many more suggestions as time goes by to help you establish new health habits to be breaking bad. Breaking habits. bad health. Yeah, and, and the throw pillow suggestion is if to, to make your bedroom 
very luxurious and yes. relaxing and comfort. So you I mean, can't wait to go to sleep. Yeah. So it's, um, you know, it's inviting with these new, something new, you know, something new in your bedroom that is not, you know, it's, it's just going to soothe you and get you to sleep and sleep well. Yeah. As opposed to trying that on a bed of nails. So. No, can't do that. That would not be good. It's possible, but it's a little stressful. <laughs> and anyway, uh, with, that, we nailed it. <laughs> with that, I think we nailed it and we're ready to it. Stop yeah. this. We, by the way, so those of you in New Normal Diet, you lucky ducks, we will be back with you on, on Wednesday. Those of you who missed out on it, we will be reopening this, I believe, next month or so. It depends. The schedule depends on how our how our initial beta group of New Normal Dieters do. And uh, we'll be back here next week at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific, mm -hmm. 11 a.m. Hawaiian time. Oh. And noon Alaskan. And 15 hours in the Philippines. 15 hours. In the Philippines, 15 hours now. away. <laughs> I know same that. For you, same for you there. Aussies. You Aussies will be 15 <laughs> hours away too. <laughs> Wanna wait? There are more. I have than lots eight. of friends down there. Way down on the actually there's 17 hours, I think. I've got friends in Australia and New Zealand. So tell them to come on in and talk to us. New Zealand. Yes. Next time they can come in. <laughs> All right, that's it for this week. Okay, that's it. We'll be back. See you later. Adios. Bye. Have a good weekend. Ciao. Ciao.